in the name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host, known here on YouTube and many other places as the mighty, 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 mm, Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I remember as a youngster, I was born in the early 1960s, and I remember in school, when I was growing up, they had us to pledge allegiance to the flag. And during this particular time as a child, I pledged allegiance to the flag, and I loved to draw the red, white, and blue. In fact, to be honest with you, even right now, I like the structure or the de or the de or the design of the American flag. I like the stars and the stripes. It's, it is a pretty design. However, as I grew older, I began to see the truth of the matter, and then I began to dislike the stars and the stripes because even though it is a pretty design, how and what it represents, how this nation came about and what it represents is not pretty. It is ugly. But as a child, I was made to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I used to draw, spend hours, because I saw the flag so pretty. I used to spend hours drawing the American flag. I was an American, and I was proud to be an American citizen. I was taught these things to give allegiance and to be proud of America, but I did not know and I was not taught the truth and the reality of this nation that I was as a child being brainwashed to love, being brainwashed to be patriotic too. I remember, now can y'all imagine this? When I was a younger person, I used to go around singing Yankee Doodle. Oh, I'm a Yankee Doodle daddy. I'm a Yankee Doodle boy. La, 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 with my Uncle Sam, born on the 4th of July. I have a Yankee Doodle sweetheart. She's my Yankee Doodle joy. Yankee Doodle came to London just to ride a pony. I am the Yankee Doodle boy. <laughs> Woo! Little did I know that Yankee Doodle could only be a Caucasian person and my people, while this white guy who was Yankee Doodle was doodling, my people were in the in the fields of the South, working from sun up to sun down, toiling, being terrorized every day, not getting paid for not one iota of their labor for 400 years. And even as a little boy, growing up in the 60s, I did not know and nobody was telling me that during the 60s, my people we were being sprayed with fire hoses and dogs sicked on us and we were being lynched at will. Nobody told me that. I was born in the state of Mississippi. But I guess I was, all that was just shielded away from me. I did not know what my people was going through. I was taught this fantasy thing. I was taught about how the the Nina, the, 
the, the Nina, the Peter, the Santa Marina, whatever, the white folks got on these boats and they came to America. Y'all know that little kitty story, the fantasy story that they give us. And you know how they sing America, the beautiful, majestic waves of grain and, and all this type of stuff. They told us about honest aid and the lie that he freed the slaves. That was not the intent. Anybody that really knows history knows what happened, the relationship between slavery and the Civil War. That's a lie. Abraham Lincoln could care less about slaves. George Washington chopped down the cherry tree, the pilgrim, the Pledge of Allegiance, honest aid, the Caucasian people of this nation. Y'all really believe these kindergarten stories that have been taught to you. This American, the beautiful lie. Yankee Doodle came to London just to ride a pony. No, you came to London to gather with your brothers and sisters so you can plan how to take and conquer dark people. How to destroy and make dark people savages so that you could take advantage of their resources, their free labor, their mineral wealth, anything that you, any material thing that you could get your, your hands on. How many dark people, savages, did you kill and you murder in order to build the United States of America? You don't want to be reminded of the reality and the truth of this nation. Show me, white people of America, show me one inch of America that you've gotten without spilling the blood of an African, spilling the blood of a Native American, Native person, because they're not American. They're not part of you or some Mexican person. And not only did you do that here, but once you got strong, you began to go around the earth exploiting other dark people, and you still do the same thing today. Nothing has changed. And to bring our talk to conclusion, you want to talk about America. You want to talk about Microsoft. You want to talk about your big army. And you want to talk about all your sciences and technology. That's wonderful. But these things, Microsoft, Facebook, YouTube, and all these things that you talk about that make you great, your sciences and your technology, that make you quote-unquote civilized, and greater than the so-called savages. None of these things made you rich. You became rich and powerful due to your murder of dark people. You became rich and powerful due to your enslavement of dark people. Not because of Microsoft. Not because you invented the internet. Not because you invented the telephone or the light bulb. Whatever you want to claim. You, this nation, became rich and powerful due to 400 years of free labor. Can you imagine, just imagine, not paying somebody the minimum wage. What is the minimum wage? The minimum wage is $5, $6. If you take the black folks, even if we were paid the minimum wage after 400 years, look how much money that is, and you got that for free, and you have the nerve to talk about black folks on welfare. You have the nerve to try to call black folks lazy. If black people were lazy, how could they have built this nation working from sun up to sun down? I guess, oh, but today's blacks aren't like that. I would hope they aren't like that. They need to get paid. Real money. You don't want to accept your reality. You want black people, you want dark folks 
to forget all those things. You want us to be like me when I was a little boy. Didn't know any better. Patriotic to a country. I did not know what you done to my people or done to me. These persons that you call black are nothing but dark skinned versions of you because you claim that you set the Africans free. But you did not return them to Africa physically, nor did you return them to Africa mentally. They are nothing but dark-skinned versions of you. That's why so many of these so-called black people, that's why they jump to your defense, because they jump in to the to the defense of their slave master, their brother, their sister, who is being attacked for no just valid reason because that was a long time ago. I'm sorry. And you can terminate Angel Snuff Nuff 7 and you can terminate many other brothers and sisters who remind you of your wickedness and your evil all you want to. But it is time now and truth has come. Just like I was ignorant as a little boy, I didn't know any better. But when the truth came, then the America that I had grown to love as a child, I began to hate. And it's not the fact that I just hate for the sake of, oh, I just hate somebody. No, I hate what you've done. You are a liar and you are a deceiver. And you hurt me. You hurt my people and you have done nothing to heal the wound of what you've done. You sit back and try to cover your head and try to pretend like nothing happened. And now you are suffering. Your economy is falling. And now you're hurting. Come on, Negroes. Join us. Fight the evil. You fight the evil by yourself. Black folks have been fighting the evil and wickedness of the American government and all these exploiters for 400 years. Now you need to see who you are. This is the man in the mirror. You need to see exactly who you are. You are not America the beautiful. This is America the ugly, the deceitful, the liars, the deceivers, warmongers. That's what you are. And now truth has come and you have an opportunity to straighten yourself up or you're going to get straightened out. Thank you for listening. This is your brother Tony Gibraltar. This was and is. The reality's temple on earth. Mighty Angel Snub Number Seven. I just want to be casual, and I want to speak about for a few minutes. I want to talk about psychiatry. Psychiatry fails again. Do you know why? Psychiatry fails again because psychiatry is fake. There's nothing more fake than psychiatry. There's nothing credible, nothing valid about psychiatry. It is purely opinion. And for those of you who know anything about psychiatry, their holy book is called the DSM or the Diagnostic Symptoms Manual, and in the, when you first begin to read that book, it will tell you, this is just opinions. They have no type of scientific evidence, no type of credible evidence to support no mental illness. All your mental illnesses are fake. First of all, you have to understand what an illness is. You have to understand what a sickness is. These persons have no test, nothing to valid that is valid to determine whether you suffer some type of mental defect. This is not to say that your brain can become in disrepair. That's not to say that. But these people don't know nothing. They are fake. If psychiatry 
knew so much, then why didn't they know that James Holmes, this young fella, was dangerous and he ended up killing 12 people, injuring a total of 72, something to that. They say in psychiatry that they can determine if a person is dangerous. Now here this guy is, James Holmes. He is under psychiatric. Did I pronounce that right? I don't, anyway, the care of psychiatrists. They feel that he might be dangerous. They feel something. That's the closest they are going to get. Now see, psychiatrists have the power and they can lock you up. Maybe not for a long time, but if psychiatrists declare that you are a danger, the only thing they have to do is go to the authorities and they can lock you up for a, for a minimum of three days or something like that, 72 hours. Or, but apparently, now, see, this is where the racism comes in. And the reason why they did not make any type of move on this young guy, James Holmes, is because he comes from a affluent family. He's educated. And above all, he is white. He is Caucasian. He is a wonderful example of the American dream. Young and educated, articulate, scholarly. And now he's a murderer. But they allow him to slide because he's Caucasian. That's the racism. Then you had the Fort Hood massacre. Where, the, where I forgot how many it was. American soldiers were killed and injured. The killer is a psychiatrist himself. And his colleagues, the people he worked with, are psychiatrists, but nobody saw he was dangerous. So he was allowed to do what he did. Now these people are so expert, they can determine somebody so dangerous, but when you look at these mass murders, and many of these people were under psychiatric uh, care, how come they didn't do anything to stop? Or how come they didn't, didn't determine that these people were really dangerous? I want to say, and I want to give credit to where credit is due. Now, I'm not going to argue and debate about Scientology. But one thing about Scientology, and I will stand with them on this. They are 1,000, 2,000, 100,000 percent correct what the Scientologists teach about mental illness, psychiatry. It's all fake. I know some of y'all, some of you suffer, and y'all been taking them pills. You suffer from schizophrenia and depression and, and, and whatever, all these different, whatever it is that these psychiatrists put on you and your baby has ADHD, so your children are drugged up, you drugged up, the whole country drugged up on these uh, mind-altering chemicals. And if you notice, now here's a person that they claim or they knew was dangerous, but he was not on any kind of medication. I don't hear any reports that they try to put him on medication, but every day, they put people in mental institutions. They have not even been diagnosed, have not even been tested. Before you can even get in the mental institution good, they want to dump you up. How come this killer was not doped up? Psychiatry is racist. If you go back and look at the history of psychiatry, 
The psychiatrist said that a slave who wanted to run away from the master had a mental illness. They called it drinktomania. Now what sense do that make? That's a mental illness. So I, so I am saying, wanting to stay with my master, being treated harshly. But I become insane because I want to leave the plantation. I want to be free. See, I suffer from drinktomania right now. And many so-called African Americans who hate the condition and the mistreatment uh, placed upon our shoulders by a racist society when we cry out and show how racist and wicked living in a white supremacist nation called the United States of America we get called mentally ill. We must be sick because we're supposed to sit here in America and love our babies being shot down in the streets of Florida and some sucker talk about I did it in self defense and we're supposed to be happy. We suffer from Drectomania. To show you how fake psychiatry is. Don't you know. Prior to 1973, 1974. Some of y'all people that think you're so smart. Look all this up. You don't have to take my word for it. But see. I understand. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Because I live under psychiatry. I saw the so-called mental illnesses. Most of these people were dope fiends. Most of these people was drunk. They were, and when you when you do drugs and when you when you are alcoholic, you are doing things to affect your mind. Have nothing to do with mental illness because when they stop drinking, when they stop using that dope, these people was just as normal as anybody else was. But these psychiatrists and these psychologists, it's an easy job that they do. The easiest degree that you can get. It's psychiatrists, psychologists. Because the only thing you have to do is guess. Guess about stuff. But homosexuality was a mental illness prior to 1973, 74. Yes, it was. What happened? Many of the psychologists were homosexuals. The gay lesbian community got upset because their behaviors was considered a mental illness. So, under the pressure of gays and lesbians, or whatever you want to call them, those who are afflicted with this certain behavior, the psychiatrist took that illness out of the DSM. Did you also know that feminism, or the mentality of feminism, was also a mental illness? Because a woman's supposed to stay home, take care of her children, and let the man go out and work. You know, the old Christian kind of stuff. That's considered a mental illness. But the feminists, the women, rose up and complained about it. And they had to take that, men that mental illness out of the DSM. If you, if you have a mental illness, if you, are, if you have a heart attack, you can't tell somebody, Oh, could I don't like you talking about my heart attack. Take that out of the take that out of the out of, out of the, the medical books about heart attack. I don't like it. I don't want you to talk about my heart. That's stupid. A mental illness, a sickness is a sickness, a illness is, is an illness. You can't complain about something and somebody take it out. That shows you how fake psychiatry is. But it is also again racist. Because most of the time, if you are black, you're always going to be crazy. You're always going to be insane. And they have to give you medication. While many Caucasian people, they always have excuses for their behavior. Oh, that just, that just happened because of a rough childhood. They was abused as a child or whatever. They were allergic to certain drugs. But black folks, mental illness run in your family. From your great grandfathers. And we are mentally ill. But not in that kind of way. We should be mentally ill. After going through 400 years. Of abuse in a racist society. 
what I saw under psychiatry. I, I watched white guys be released. And then as soon as they got released, they killed little children and, and committed rape. While black folks who basically didn't do nothing locked up for 30 years. It is racist and it is fake. That's psychiatry. Where were you, psychiatry, when James Holmes was getting ready to do his thing? It's all fraud. And I will debate anybody and I will win anybody that wants to debate about psychiatry because it's fake. Bottom line. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. And if you pro psychiatry, you're going to get whoop coming here. So I wouldn't advise you to stay here. <laughs> you know. Thank you for listening. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace, love, and always, and welcome to another edition of the Reality's Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host, known here on YouTube and many other places as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Number Seven. I'm your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I just wanted to make this uh, quick commentary while it was on my mind. And I was wondering to myself, I wonder if I am being too harsh when I judge black men. Am I being too harsh, too judgmental when I judge us and what I expect from us as men, I wonder, especially those, I don't care nothing about the black people, the black men that we call sambos and dark Europeans, I wonder about and I expect a lot from those of us that call ourselves men within the confines of what we call black nationalism, black power. We claim that we are involved in a black revolution. So if you are involved in a black revolution, if you are at war with an, an, an oppressor, if you are banging on the beast, then there must be a certain mentality that coincides with that type of activity, the black male, those of us who are on the forefront, you must have a certain mentality in order to overcome your condition, overcome your enemies. So, I just began to think, and I wanted something to tell me if I was incorrect in my opinion about the true black revolutionary. What is it that you should expect or we should expect from the true black revolutionary? A true black liberator. So the answer came to me and that answer verified my previous thoughts and made me to add on to what I've said before about the true black liberator. I was watching a documentary about World War II. Of course, you know, that was the great European, the white man's war, World War II. He did not get along with his brothers around the earth and they were fighting one another and of course, as you know, Japan was dragged into it and, and so forth, whatever. But the narrator of the documentary was talking about this soldier. 
and the soldier was describing his experience at war. I'm going to tell y'all that again. Describing his experience at war. And he was saying that he stopped. He stopped trying to make friends. Now those who were fighting with him was his brothers. And we are friendly. But he stopped trying to make friends because the casualty rate was so high. You could make friends with a person and tomorrow they will be dead. That's how it is when you are at war. You suffer casualties. And in the beginning and during World War II, even though great, as great as America is, America suffered great casualties. Many men died on the battlefield in World War II. They continue to die in Afghanistan and Iraq and around the earth, but there's nothing like a world war. And of course you had great casualties during the white man's revolutionary war in any war. So a warrior, if you are a true black revolutionary, if you are a warrior, why are you concerned with making friends? These are your brothers that fight by your side. But we are not friends. We are warriors. We don't have time to be friends. We have an oppressor that we have to get off our back. There was a video that I've seen where some young brother was talking about and upset because somebody won't be his friend. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to find brothers and sisters who want to bang on the beast, get this oppressor, break out of this grip of mental slavery once and for all. I don't want to be your dang friend. That's not what I'm about. I want to get this oppressor and, get and change our community. That's what is needed, not being friends. What you want to do? Go on a date to McDonald's? You want to go to Disneyland? I was watching the movie called Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu is one of our greatest warriors. You did not see Shaka Zulu talking about taking up a queen and having a family. Shaka Zulu had a warrior mentality. What sense do it make for me to take a wife and have children? And I'm a warrior at war and I could die within the next few seconds. But see, y'all don't have a warrior mentality. You want to have a family. You want friends so you can enjoy the comforts of your oppression. That's why you don't spend time fighting your oppression. That's why you continue to stay in the condition that you are in. It does not take a whole lot of us to change the condition. The ones who are present right now could do it if you had the right mentality. If you were really willing to die for the cause. It don't take much. I want to say this. It is so beautiful. And I want to give credit where credit is due. To the FOI. The fruit of Islam. Those brothers that put on their bow ties and suits. And go out in the community and, and greet. Those are uh, our people. That's wonderful. And that's a first step. And that's a good sign. But see, a warrior and the FOI are supposed to be warriors sooner or later. You got to get in the dirt. You are a soldier. So why are you making families and friends when you know you could be called up and you could be taken out? A warrior don't go into neighborhoods to shake hands and smile in people's faces. Warriors and soldiers go into neighborhoods to stamp out or stump out and get rid of the threat. The first step is to be like the FOI and you go into the community, but chances are you're shaking hands with those who aren't shooting the guns, 
who are the one that's causing the trouble. You're not shaking hands. You're not greeting those people. So for the men, the warriors, you have to take off the bow tie, put on your camouflage suit or your black suit and get yourself together and stamp out the threat. Just like overall, we have to bang on this beast and get this thing off our back, this Caucasian racist devil off our back once and for all. And see, I want to tell y'all something. It don't make no difference if you lose. But see, when you die, and even if you lose, if you fight, your enemy will give you your respect. If they have some type of honor. Because they know they can't do you any kind of way no more. But when you're a little sissy and you're always running, scratching where you don't itch, you know how it is when you uh, when you suffer samboism, coonism, trying to love and trying to get along. No, not in here. You're going to respect me as a man, just like anybody else. And I'd rather be dead in the grave before I run around here and be your puppet and continue to be your slave. It's not happening no more. You have the wrong mentality to be a black liberator, a black warrior. You want to create your own nation. To create your own nation, you're going to lose all your comfort zone. You might have to go back and live without running water, without electricity, and all the things that y'all love, your Xbox, and taking your family to Disneyland. Or, or vacation somewhere do you think do you think George Washington and all the freedom fighters of the of the Revolutionary War was thinking about going to Disneyland you trying to get an oppressor off your back you are under siege no I don't want to be your friend I want to be your brother at arms I want you next to me Willing to take bullet, willing to sacrifice in order to build our nation, free ourselves from this oppressor once and for all. This is not entertainment. And as long as you view this struggle as entertainment, you're going to be right here in the same position, in, in giving the same poor crap to your children. Pretending to be a warrior, pretending to be a, a revolutionary because you're scared to die. You think this is fun. Ain't nothing fun about being free. It's a struggle. We all have to start from somewhere. That's why the Caucasian people, that's why nobody respects us. You're not serious enough. They don't see warriors because I guarantee you if they really saw us as warriors and soldiers, not just talking here, you don't even have the right attitude then you will see them reacting in a different manner. With that said, this is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. Let us be men. Stop this old corny bashing of women. Stand up and get your brothers to stand up. And let us bang on this beast and get this oppressor off our back. And the greatest oppressor is yourself. Strain yourself up. And let us get the job done and let our Future generations, be proud of those who are present today. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra, the angel snutting up seven. This was and is the Realities Temple on Earth. Peace forever and always. This is your brother, the angel snutting up seven. Just coming at you a little casual right now. I had a little something, something going on up in here that I wanted to share with you because perhaps maybe you were thinking the same thing so maybe we this morning afternoon evening whatever time that you have a chance to listen to these few words in this commentary maybe we are thinking the same thing at some point at some time, somewhere. <laughs> but what is mind-boggling or what is bothering me 
is this thing called homelessness in America. Now, of course, since this is a America, you expect, we expect to see American citizens homeless. Well, the first thing that comes to my mind, how can such a great, rich, wealthy, powerful nation, how can you allow your citizens to be homeless? How can an American person, especially if they have served in the military, how can you allow them to be homeless on the street after they fought for their nation? But in general, how can we, how can Americans, how can you tolerate to know that another um, citizen is on the street? Then you have so-called Christian people all over this country. In fact, America is called or call itself a Christian nation. You teach that you love everybody and that this Jesus loves everybody and this God loves everybody. At the same time, this God in religious teachings in the Bible is always killing somebody, always burning them up, always flooding them out. This God is doing this killing out of love. The whole thing is contradictory if you love everybody then you should love also Satan because Satan is also God's creation anyway that's a different subject and we could talk about that for the next few minutes but I wanted to talk about homelessness in America and Americans so even though I don't understand because if I was a leader in this nation, how could I go to bed? How could I sleep comfortable at night knowing that my brother, another fellow citizen, is homeless in the street? Now, some people want to be in the street. But, but you have men, husbands, wives, and their children also out on the street. You have people who suffer from mental defect that's out in the street who don't know any better. But we don't want to talk about that. We push homelessness on the side. We try to hide it. We try to ignore it. It shows American <clears throat> hypocrisy. It shows that you are a liar and you are a hypocrite. You really don't care about nobody. You are charitable when it can make you look good. When it gives the illusion that you care when you really don't. So here you are, a millionaire, and you hand out a few hundred dollars. It makes you look good. Those little, that little chunk change that you hand out don't mean nothing to you. It's just like me giving out 10 cents when I just made $500 for working all week. Y'all so fake in America. Woo, this is a tacky, tacky, fraud country. It makes you shame to be, or you should be shamed to be an American citizen. And the number one person that we should blame is the educational system that permits selfishness the government that does not and do and will do nothing about the citizens being out on the streets this is something that should not be tolerated but i go back again whereas when you look at homelessness in america you do expect the homeless population because American citizens are the majority in population here 
you expect that the homeless population do consist of a great majority of Americans. However, and this is the point I would like to make for us. However, Americans are the face of homelessness. Now you tell me, every day, every few seconds, somebody from another country from thousands and thousands of miles away or hundreds of miles away they enter this country you should see a good percentage of them homeless on the street now correct me if I'm in error but from my experience going through some of the major cities at night and I've seen many homeless persons and if I'm not careful I could become a homeless person myself <laughs> and I would be an American citizen homeless and many people are homeless due to no fault of their own of course as you know many of our citizens in this nation have lost their homes due to foreclosure and job loss and so many different circumstances but you have people who enter this country every day, every few seconds. Where are they? Shouldn't they be homeless? They left a home to come to America while they struggle, while they are trying to achieve the quote-unquote American dream. Something, a homeless person who is an American citizen has yet to achieve but here comes somebody from thousands of miles away they are not homeless you don't see them on the street where are they at how are they not homeless but you have American citizens on the street that are homeless now I, I'm, this is this is uh, this is just something about this whole thing don't sound right how can you have so many American citizens, men, women, and children, homeless on the street, but you have people from foreign countries, from thousands of miles away, men, women, and children, but you don't see them struggling on the street. Somebody must be taking care of them. And could it be the American government is helping taking care of these immigrants and some of y'all call some of these people illegal aliens, the dark ones. The dark skinned ones are called illegal aliens. And those who are light skinned or from Europe, they are called immigrants. <laughs> and when you think about aliens, the first thing that pops in your mind is some creature from outer space. And these who come to America with dark skin, they are illegal creatures from outer space you don't belong here but at the same time coming from Mexico this was at one time their people's land until the Europeans the Caucasian people of America created a false unjustified war so they could have a reason to uh, forcible, forcibly remove the aliens from this territory that they wanted. They wanted war so they could have an opportunity to take these lands that was once controlled or lived upon by people that we call Mexicans. But again, I'm just, it's just, it's just mind-boggling to me. How can American citizens, regardless to your race, I don't care about your race. If you are an American citizen, you should not be homeless. I don't care if they set up mud shacks all over the United States. Nobody, no American family, if they choose, some people, they 
They are in a situation and they just deal with it. But they should also have help from the government, the citizens, their fellow citizens of this nation. Nobody should be homeless. I question again how can people travel thousands and thousands of miles, come here, and you don't see a great percentage of them homeless, begging on the street, struggling, like you see American citizens. This should tell us something about America. Something here is wrong. And y'all are supporting tyranny. You are supporting injustice. You are supporting something that is fake. This is not real freedom. This is not real democracy. This is not even that which the forefathers of this nation dreamed of. You are like old baggage. If you cannot be used, nobody gives a damn about you. If I can exploit you some kind of way, and after I use you, I don't care what happens to you. That's the main problem with the relationship of black people in this nation because the primary function of African Americans was slave, free slave labor. Now, what do we do with these slaves now that we don't need them anymore? And right now, behind the scenes in Washington, you have these evil people behind the scenes wondering and always planning how to get rid of excess baggage they no longer need. Anyway, I brought up the topic. Let's talk about it. This is your brother Talik Ibn Ra. This was an end. The reality's temple on earth. Name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host, known here on YouTube and many other places as the mighty, 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 mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Angel Snub Nub Seven, your brother, and hopefully your friend. I hope that after this talk, I hope that we can still be friends to those who are in the gay and lesbian community. I hope that we can still be friends, but I have to talk, I have to speak the real truth. And sometimes truth hurts, but we must be, or I must tell, or a Christian must tell, or a Muslim must tell, anyone who has truth must tell, so the blood can be off our hands, and those of whom we direct this truth to, when you begin to suffer the consequences of your actions, you cannot say that you did not know because the warning or the teaching, the knowledge was given to you in a language plain and clear so that you understand. But since you do not like truth, you cannot accept the truth, then you have a problem, and, and that is your problem. That is not mine. Myself and many others, we must bring to the public arena the real truth so that we can make proper decisions. And if people like you and you claim to be speaking truth, clearly you must not be speaking what is called real truth. I only have a few minutes, about 10 minutes. I have a lot of ground to cover. Maybe I will go over time a little bit, but let us on this busy, ye get busy. Okay, let us talk about gay marriage. I want to say, first of all, I do not believe in God, period. So I could care less. In this country, homosexual behavior is acceptable. In this country, I could care less if gays and lesbians or 
whatever you want to call yourself, I could care less if you get married. But I want to bring up just a few notes for those who are on the fence or who really don't understand what is going on here. Again, in this country, I wish you the best of luck in your uh, position to become married. I could care less, and I have nothing against those who call themselves gays and lesbians. As long as you don't hurt me, I don't seek to harm you, we will get along very, very fine. Now, okay, here we go. Now, this is the part of our talk that you will not like if you are or claim to be gay or lesbian that practice what many call homosexual behaviors. I, but I, I have to break this down to us again for those who really don't know. Those who uh, you know that the gay and lesbian community, y'all putting a little bit, a little bit of technology out there in order to get your point across. Let me make this very clear. First of all, whether you like it or not, homosexuality is a unnatural behavior. It's a natural it's, it's an unnatural behavior. Oh, how can you say that it's an unnatural behavior? Homosexuality comes from up out of incarceration which is men or women being denied the right to express themselves excuse me to express themselves in a sexual manner and the exploitation of children this goes on for a certain period of time perhaps for generations if not hundreds of years of course you know when people are incarcerated, they still have their sexual nature, so they, they out of frustration, begin to act out that frustration on other people of the same gender that they've been locked up with. Okay. Then you have the exploitation of children. Children are not sexually mature. So these criminals, these wicked beasts, what they do to babies, the babies are not sexually mature, so they target the child's anus. And since the, the, the young girl, her vagina is too small, and the young baby male, he cannot get an erection, they take these babies, and I don't want to be vulgar, but I'm, I want to tell us how it really is. They take these children and they make them lick their, the, the criminal, this beast, makes the child lick their genitalia. This is sodomy. Okay. Now, those who have been affected this way, especially children, when they get in a natural relationship because they were abused, they continue these behaviors because this is what they've been taught. The people who are in prison, once they become free, they go back into regular society and continue to practice these behaviors. These behaviors came from up out of criminal, abnormal, exploited circumstance. Another example of what I'm talking about is you see these young boys and even some of these young girls sagging their pants. This is prison behavior. But you have countless men and women who have been incarcerated. They bring that same behavior out into regular society and society begins to embrace prison mentality. And these young boys and these young girls sagging their pants they don't even know what they're doing. They just copying a behavior. So you have young men and women that might have problems with being shy or whatever. Whatever uh, they might have 
difficulties in socializing with people. The idea of being a homosexual is brought to them and they embrace that just like people are sagging pants. Except sagging pants in America is a new phenomenon while the exploitation, incarceration has been going on for hundreds of years and this has been passed down. This is an unnatural behavior. You do not see this in nature. It is unnatural not to have the desire for man and woman, male and female, to come together because that's the only way that you can continue to live is through the reproduction cycle. That's the only way that your DNA can move forward. If, if homosexual behavior was natural, then it would not last long because homosexuals cannot reproduce. And in, in our natural life, you have to be able to reproduce. So, homosexuals will become extinct. So, you want to adopt babies, and you, some of y'all even tolerate the natural sex process so that you can uh, bring into being children that will accept your behavior, your lifestyle. Now, this is a, prior to 1973, the, the psychiatrist called homosexual behavior a mental illness. But of course, as you know, many psychiatrists were homosexuals and the gay and lesbian community itself began to rise up. And they did not like somebody calling their behavior a mental illness. So, due to lobbying and the complaint, the psychiatrists of America changed their diagnostic symptoms manual, their book that determines what is a mental illness, and took homosexual behavior out of that book. That shows you how fake psychiatry is. Because an illness is an illness. If I don't like a stomach ache, I don't want you to talk about my stomach ache. So I want you to take that out of your medical books about stomach aches. That's not how it works. An illness is an illness. You cannot take it out of a book. A heart attack is a heart attack. Diabetes is diabetes. Measles is measles. Chicken pox is chicken pox. AIDS is AIDS. You can't take it out of your medical book. I mean, you could if you want to, but we know that these are ailments. This is this. We know these are sickness. You can't just ignore it and take it out of some book. It's an illness. Homosexuality is a is a mental illness. It is mental defect. It comes from up out of. It's a mental defect upon society. It comes. And it origins out of exploitation of women, exploitation of children, incarceration. Now you also have cases where a person is born gender confused. Now, you think that homosexuals have sex. There is only one sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse is any activity that you partake in that produces life. And the only way you can do that is to place the penis into the vagina. That's sexual intercourse. There is no other sexual contact. There is no other sex. Anything else is sodomy. There is no such thing as anal sex. That is just a freakish, nasty act. Has nothing to do with sexual intercourse. That is not sex. But because we want to justify our nasty behavior and see, uh-oh, don't y'all heterosexuals start, start talking about homosexuals. See, y'all practice so-called heterosexuals. Y'all do the same thing. You put the penis into the anus. You put the penis into somebody's mouth. You lay down and allow somebody 
to lick your vagina and all that, that is homosexual behavior. This is this behavior has permeated society, humanity, the mainframe of humanity. And it has gone on for so long that you think that is natural. See, let me tell y'all something real quick. Some of y'all think that is natural, quote unquote, natural. You think it's natural for dogs to bark. Yes, dogs do bark. But when you see these dogs, woof, 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 woof. Many of these dogs bark for no reason. Just woof, 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 woof. Bark, bark, bark. Dogs come from wolves. You don't see wolves howling and barking like that. That's an unnatural behavior. That's a behavior that was bred into them by those who enslaved the dog. They liked the fact that these animals could bark, so they used the dog as a warning system. And through time, Next thing you know, these dogs are just barking, barking. They are no longer needed like that anymore. But that behavior of barking is now in bed within dogs because the human beings that bred the dogs, that exploited the dogs, incarcerated the dogs, made, bred the dogs to do this unnatural behavior. So you sag your pants and don't even know it comes from prison. You're a homosexual and you don't even know that that behavior comes from up out of generations of people, women, and children being exploited and it comes from up out of incarceration. You don't know it. You just do it so it feels natural. So a dog just bark. Woof, 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 woof. They don't know that their ancestors did not do uh, uh, participate or partake in that type of behavior. They don't know. You don't know. But now, now you know. And that's why y'all want to, I don't want to be vulgar, but that's why y'all want to suck and lick. Because see, children are sexually immature. What can a child do for you? So th these devils, these people will take these children and make them lick and suck on them. Common sense tells us that homosexuality is an unnatural behavior. Well, there are homosexual animals. There are no homosexual animals. Because when homosexuals lick on each other and feel and touch, they are seeking some type of pleasure. When you see an animal, a male animal lay down with, a, with another male animal, in many animal societies, some males and some females are not allowed to mate. So what you see, so what you see is not homosexual behavior. You are seeing sexual frustration. So they go through the the motion of mating and have no choice. Since I can't be with a female, since I can't be with a male, then I will, I will act that motion out on a male, another male, or another female, somebody like myself. But they are not seeking sexual gratification. They want to mate. They want to produce life. They want to, they want to move their DNA forward. And the only way they can move their DNA forward is they must reproduce. They must make babies. Homosexuals can't make babies. Animals are not looking for sexual gratification. But in this homosexual life, the reason why you do what you do because you're looking for some type of perverted pleasure. I know you don't like what I'm saying, but it's common sense. Common sense tells us that homosexuality is a is an unnatural behavior, and so uh, nature. When you look at nature and look at life on this planet, you see that it is unnatural. Because if again, if it was up to homosexuals, 
you will not even exist because you cannot reproduce. Who would reproduce you? It takes it takes a vagina and a penis coming together in order to bring you into existence. Two penises cannot bring you into existence. Two vaginas can't bring you into existence. What y'all talk about don't make any sense, but exploitation, incarceration through the generations, and actually the origins of homosexuality goes back to Greece. When at first the act of 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 a of a man taking on a boyfriend it was a sign it was a sign of I'm rich a sign of class you know it was something like an apprenticeship a man would take a young boy and show him his trade or or he would be the heir to a, a person's riches in Greek society but pretty soon it became perverted and that's where the word boyfriend comes from now this is my lover this child that's where boyfriend come from then of course the reverse the reverse meaning of that would be girlfriend but boys have always they were the first targets of exploitation by these perverts and these freaks and here you are in 2012 because you don't know but don't know any better you don't know the origin you don't know what has happened to you you don't know you know there are homosexuals gay and lesbian people you know deep down inside something is wrong you don't know but see now you know and I'm not judging you I'm not judging you, but I'm telling you what has happened. I don't judge the young brother or the sisters. These people out here sagging their pants. You don't know. But now you know. So since now that you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It is an imbalance in your brain. It is an unnatural behavior. So now we've come to the point in America because it seems as though homosexuality is natural and now in America it is an acceptable behavior. Now the gay and lesbian community, those who suffer from these, this, this uh, mental imbalance because that's what it is. It is an unnatural behavior. Oh, you hate us. I don't hate you. See, that's another thing. You use the word hate to try to make people feel guilty to accept your lifestyle. I'm telling you where your behavior comes from. I'm telling you where sagging pants come from. Has nothing to do with hate. I'm telling you that it is an unnatural behavior that origins from uh, out of incarceration and exploitation. Sagging pants and homosexual behavior. In fact, sagging pants is a sign in prison that you are available, that your anus, that you are ready to have another man go inside of your backside. So you drag your pants down to let other men know, I want to do that, I'm available. You don't know these things. So you got all these young boys that's macho with their pants sagging. They have no idea that they are telling other men, my booty is available. <laughs> Woo! Oh my, oh, oh my Lord, my Lord. <laughs> I got to bring in a little religious, uh, uh, what you call that? Anyway, I just got to be a little religious because I do come from that type of background. Lord help us! <laughs> now I want to bring this to conclusion by speaking about this the reason why the why the uh, gay and lesbian community why they, they why they are 
so dead set, I got to get married. Civil unions is not enough for them. They have to get married. I want to be married. We all know that marriage, the term marriage, the ritual of marriage between a man and a woman, this comes from up out of Christian teachings. This comes from up out of religious teachings. It is a ritual where the male and female make vows to one another that they will, that they dedicate themselves to one another. They produce family and the, the reason for this union is to produce a strong family and produce babies. Homosexuals can't produce babies. But we do know that marriage in and of itself, it comes from up out of religious teaching. And in the religion, and we're going to use Christianity for an example, because that is the primary religion of the United States of America. The majority of Americans are involved or practice some kind in some shape, fashion, or form, some form of Christianity. In Christianity, and this has been taught for hundreds of years, the God of the Bible calls homosexual behavior a sin. One of the first commandments that God gave to Adam was that he is supposed to reproduce. How can you reproduce Adam if God gives you a man for a mate? God gave Adam Eve, a female. So, in order to reproduce this planet, so to do otherwise, God view as a sin, and God hates and dislikes homosexual behavior, that this was the reason why he destroyed in the scriptures the two cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Matter of fact, that's where you get the word sodomy from because it is the activity of the penis going into the anus or the uh, penis going into the mouth. Homosexual behaviors. God destroyed Sodom, Sodomy, and Gomorrah. God dislikes it, but you have these hypocrites. You have these fake religious believers that somehow try to want to flip everything around and make it like God loves homosexual behavior. Now, let me say this. Sin is sin, as far as I'm concerned. If you're going to, uh, what's that? If you're going to persecute homosexuals, then you need to also, with the same vigor, you need to persecute fornicators and adulterers because they are also, fornication and adultery is also sin. In fact, fornicators and adulterers are worse because they produce life and they teach and show their children and continue this same sinful behavior and make things worse on the human family. But since homosexuals can't reproduce, then whatever evil that they do, whatever sin that they do, it is just confined to themselves. They can't pass homosexual behavior on to their children because they can't have any babies. But why do homosexuals, why is it so important for homosexuals to, they want to be married. Civil union is not good enough. Whatever, whatever rights, whatever privilege, privileges that you have in marriage, you can have in a civil union. If they are not there, then you can make it where civil union is just as good as marriage. But see, this is the this is the trick of the homosexual community. This is the trick of the gays and the lesbian community. This is the trick. 
See, they want to use the word marriage. Because if they can use the word marriage, it brings, it, it legitimizes their behavior that is against religious teaching. So it is acceptable in society. So you can teach the babies and children, oh, ain't nothing wrong with it. See, gays can be married just like rather other people. That's what it's all about. It's about to, it's about making homosexual behavior credible in a nation that is Christian that teaches clearly that homosexual behavior is a sin. So you want to try to break that up. You want to make your you want to make this behavior credible. You want to make it valid. So so I cannot accept civil union because that's separating and that that might bring prejudice to me. But if I can say that I'm a man and I want to be married to a man instead of having a civil union, that makes it more credible. It legitimizes my behavior. It legitimizes my behavior that is unnatural in a society that origins or that's supposed to be based upon Christian teachings that clearly says that homosexual behavior is a sin. But now, since I can be married, now my behavior is acceptable. I'm already accepted in movies, in TV, magazines, my sexual behavior, slowly but surely. So that's all why, why the, the gay and lesbian community cannot embrace civil unions. They got to go for marriage because marriage makes their, makes an unnatural behavior. That's what it is, an unnatural behavior. It makes it valid. And it is not. So I know that you uh, dislike what I had to say, but I had to bring us the truth of the matter. And again, in this country, you can be married. I could care less. Don't bother me. I have nothing. So don't bring that hate garbage to me because I bring you the truth of the matter. You can't prove otherwise. My source is nature. My source is common sense. My source is also historical fact that you don't know nothing about. But it's, it's out there. If you want it, it's not like it's a secret. Has nothing to do with hate. As long as you don't bother me, I don't bother you. As long as you're not bringing harm to anybody, you can be married, you can do whatever, you, whatever you wish. But I cannot sit back and especially allow young people who are easily influenced, they must be told the truth about sagging pants. They must be told the truth about homosexual behavior and why the gay and lesbian community do not want to accept civil unions, why they must be married so this behavior can be accepted. And you know deep down inside of yourselves, you know something is wrong. You know something is in error. And now you know what the problem is. You want to continue in your treachery, your deceit and your trickery, continue to do so. But also know that the truth is here. And as long as truth is here, your, your lies and deceit and treachery and trickery will be exposed and it will not be tolerated. And you should be shaming yourself. So with that said, brothers and sisters, friends and associates and all those who come to this, uh, who's been listening to what's supposed to have been a 13 minute video. Now it's going on for a half an hour. I hope that, that uh, I've cleared some things up and uh, bring your argument here. You will lose. I'm telling you right now. So don't even put down your comment. You cannot debate 
real truth. You cannot, there's nothing that you can do with this information except go into yourself and decide whether you're going to be right or you're going to be wrong. I'm not telling you, again, I don't hate you. I really feel sorry for us because we really don't know. But now that we do know, we need to straighten ourselves up and begin to heal what somebody else began to, uh, the wound that somebody else caused uh, maybe even hundreds of years ago. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Tali Gibbon Ra. Jot down your comments and subscribe. This was and is. Join me on Facebook, Daily Motion, Vimeo, and MySpace. This was and is. Zip it. <laughs> the reality is temple on earth.